Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory to our God. We want to thank God for another time in God's presence as we look into the perfect law of liberty that is able to save our soul. Hallelujah. I oh, welcome you especially this morning. Thank you for joining us on morning showers on Saturday. We give God praise. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for another time to come before your presence, before your throne to look at your word. We ask that you send your word to us afresh this morning. Have your way, mighty God. I pray, Lord, let the heavens above us be open. Speak to our hearts. Speak to our lives. Speak to our situations. Let your name be glorified in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. May this word be to our advantage, to our benefit. Father, we give you praise. And then we have this word we go to. We ask of God that the same result, even more, will be accomplished in the lives of the hearers in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father, for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to thank God. Welcome. Welcome to Money Showers. And this morning, we're going to be looking at kingdom benefits. We're going to be looking at the benefits of being citizens and parts of the kingdom of God. And our test is taken from the book of Psalm 103, 103, from verse 1. Psalm 103, from verse 1, we're looking at kingdom benefits. The Bible says, Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Hallelujah. In Psalm, 89, Psalm 68, verse 19, I'd like to just read Psalm 68, verse 19. The Bible tells us, that blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits, the God of our salvation. Blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits, the God of our salvation. Hallelujah. I want us to know that there are benefits that are agreeable to us as citizens of the kingdom of God. There are benefits that God has released and has loaded us with for our daily benefit, hallelujah, for our daily advantage. And the psalmist says here, bless the Lord, all my soul. Bless the Lord, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, all my soul. And forget not all his benefits, hallelujah. I want to quickly explain what we mean by benefit here. The benefits of the kingdom of God are open to all who have come into the kingdom. Let me repeat this. The benefits of the kingdom of God are open to all who have come into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. So as believers, as a child of God, God has prepared for us kingdom benefit. Hallelujah. These are benefits that come to us as a result of our being born into the kingdom of God. These are benefits that are agreeable to us having been saved, having given our life to Jesus Christ. So the false qualifications of kingdom benefit is for you to be saved. Colossians chapter 1 was the thing that we have been translated that we have been delivered from the kingdom of darkness, and we have been translated into the kingdom of his dear son. So, so the primary condition, the precondition for us to enjoy kingdom benefit is to be born into the kingdom of God, to give our lives to Jesus, to have 
our life, our names written in the Lamb's book of life as kingdom citizens. Hallelujah. The salvation of our soul is the most important and is the only prerequisite for us to enjoy kingdom benefit. So no matter who you are, young or old, man or woman, I want you to know that as long as you are written, your name is written in the register of heaven, you are open to benefits of the kingdom. And look at what the psalmist says. He said, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not. And forget not all his benefits. You know, he said, and do not forget to enjoy. This is another thing. He said, do not forget to enjoy all kingdom benefits. You know, ironically, you can be in a place or in an employment with benefits, but all you take home is your monthly pay. I want you to know that apart from your monthly pay, there are benefits that are credible to you as a staff of that company, as a member of that society. So I want us to understand this, that kingdom benefits refers to those additional things to our salvation that God has made provision for you and I to enjoy. Hallelujah. It's, a, it's an, it's an add-up. You know what Jesus said in Matthew 6? He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these other things shall be added unto you. These are the benefits we are talking about. These are the things Jesus mentioned. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Become a member of the kingdom of God. Give your life to Jesus. Let your name be written in the last book of life. And these other things shall be added. And these other things are what I call the kingdom benefits. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And we're going to be looking at scriptures this morning. And in verse 3, we come across the first benefit of the kingdom of God. Verse 3 of Psalm 103 says, Who forgives all your iniquities? The first benefit of the kingdom of God is divine pardon. Divine pardon. Bible says God has forgiven us all our iniquities. As children of the Most High, as citizens of the kingdom of God, the first benefit as we enter into the kingdom is what I call divine pardon. Hallelujah. Divine pardon. Let me explain this to us, you know, you know more closely. A hardened criminal, a career criminal, so to say, who has been, you know, condemned several times, but who has just received the presidential pardon, has all his criminal records removed. Let me repeat this. A hardened criminal, a career criminal, who's been to jail many times as a result of criminal activities. Once the president of that country gives him a presidential pardon, all his criminal records are erased. He is as if he never committed a crime because he has received the presidential pardon. How much more? Let's relate it to divine pardon that we enjoy as citizens of the kingdom of God. I want you to know that God has not just forgiven us our iniquities, he has also forgotten about them. The moment we give our life to Christ, the moment we are born again and saved by grace, I want you to know that there is no criminal record against you in heaven. Hallelujah. We have all obtained divine pardon. Glory to God in the highest. We have received divine pardon. Look at verse 12 of Psalm 103. Psalm 12, verse 103. I mean, Psalm 103, verse 12, uh, rather. Psalm 103, verse 12. The Bible says, as far 
as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgression from us. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgression from us. This is how far God has gone to grant us divine pardon. As far as the east, Glory to God, the east and west never meets. So the day you gave your life to Christ, your past is in oblivion. Your past records have been erased by the blood of Jesus. There is no record of sin against you anymore. No matter how terrible you were in the world, in the past, the Bible says God has forgiven and has removed your iniquity far from us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. What we're talking about iniquities, we, it covers everything. He's talking about our sins. He talks about our wickedness. It covers everything in the past, be it generational or be it individual. Every negative thing that we have done, every thing that we have given ourselves to, they are classified under iniquity. Anything that falls below the laws and the expectations of God is categorized as iniquities, as transgression, as sins, as wickedness. Hallelujah. Everything. I mean everything. God has forgiven you. Everything. Hallelujah. We give glory to God in the name of Jesus. Let me read to, to us Jeremiah 31, Jeremiah 31, verse 34. Please follow me closely because this is important for us to appreciate it. The Bible says in, 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 in Jeremiah 31, let me, let me read from verse 33 because of time. I would have loved to read from verse 31, but let's read from verse 33. He said, But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord, that I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Verse 34, No more shall every man teach his neighbor, and every man his brother saying, Know the Lord, for they all shall know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord. Look at this last phrase. For I will forgive their iniquity, and their sins I will remember no more. He said, I will forgive their iniquity, and their sins I will remember no more. So this is God speaking here promising and giving us an assurance of divine pardon. It says, I will forgive your iniquity and I will forget about it. God says, I will cleanse the record of your past and your record will be as clean as though you never sinned. And that is how God looks at you and I. It is as though we never sinned. Because he has given us a clean state, a clean stand, a clean beginning. The blood of Jesus has wiped out and erased every iniquity, every transgression, every tradition that were against us. I went to Colossians chapter 1 verse 14. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So the first benefit of the kingdom is divine pardon. The psalmist says, the, 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 there's a song that says, pardon for sin and peace that endures. I like that stanza in that hymn. We have received pardon for sin and that guarantees us peace that endures. When you know that your sins have been forgiven, not only forgiven, but also forgotten, it gives us peace that nothing else and by peace that endures. Hallelujah. Let's go a little further as we take a look 
And Jeremiah chapter 50, Jeremiah chapter 50, Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 20. Please take note of these scriptures so that you can read them by yourself. Verse 20. He said, in those days, Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 20. He said, in those days and in that time, says the Lord, the iniquity of Israel shall be sought, but there shall be none. And the sins of Judah, but they shall not be found. For I will pardon those whom I preserve. This is another promise of divine pardon. God says that the iniquities of Israel shall be sought, but they shall be known. And the sins of Judah, but they shall not be found. For I will pardon those whom I preserve. God is saying is that when the enemy seeks to look at your past, when they try to dig up your the sins that you committed in the past, Bible said they shall not find any. Because the record of sin, your criminal record before God has been wiped out. That's the false benefit we enjoy. Hallelujah. And that's why the scripture says now in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Now, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. The old is gone, the new has come. The old record of sin has been taken away. You have a new state of being. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Your past cannot be traced to you anymore because in Christ, your past has been disconnected from you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's important for us to understand this because it guarantees us peace before God. Many times when we come before God to pray, to exercise our kingdom rights and responsibilities and privileges, the, the, the thought, the, the remembrance of our iniquities in time past can hinder that sweet flow, that sweet fellowship, that sweet communion that we have with God. Hallelujah. And I want to let you know this. Any thought that reminds you of your past, any thought that reminds you of your the sins you have confessed and for which God has forgiven you, any of such voices is not from God, is from the pit of hell. When a voice and a thought keeps reminding you of the sins you committed yesterday, last night, or last month, or last week, or last year, I want you to know that it is from the pit of hell and it is directed to stop your fellowship from God with God. Jesus said, the Bible says, God says, I will remember no more. Glory to God. The greatest hindrance to our, our effective work with God is to keep remembering our past. God says he's taking it away from us. There is no relationship between you and your past. Hallelujah. Because you have been wiped clean by the blood of Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. He says your iniquity shall be sought, but there shall be none. The sins of Judah, but they shall not be found because we have received divine pardon. Pardon for sin and peace that endures. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I heard a story. I read a story some years ago about a young girl who, 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 who claimed that Jesus visited her. And this was taught to the priest where she was worshiping. And the priest said, trying to confirm if her narrative was true. And, and, and the priest said to the young lady, young lady, next time Jesus comes visiting, please ask him the last sin that I confessed to him. And the little girl said, okay, sir, I will do that. And true, Jesus came visiting one evening and after fellowship, after Jesus had this cause with her, and he was about to go, 
The young lady said, Lord, please don't go. I have one question. And the story has it that and the young lady said to Jesus, please, Lord, what is the sin, the last sin that so, 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 so priest confessed? And about, the story has it that Jesus paused and taught for some time and began to think for some time. And you know what she said to the lady? Jesus said, I cannot remember. I cannot remember. True to his nature, true to his work. He said he couldn't remember the last thing that the priest confessed. And that is God's word. For me, that confirmed that it was Jesus who visited that lady. Because it is consistent with the word of God. It is consistent with the provision of scripture. What is the provision of scripture? It said, and their sins I will remember no more. Deuteronomy 31 verse 34. It said, I will remember their sins no more. I will imagine that Jesus made contact to the database of heaven and typed in the name of the priest, Kingsley Ufumatobi. And the record that came was that there is no record of sin against him. Hallelujah. There's no record of sin against him. And Jesus said, I can't remember. I can't remember because it is not in heaven's database. Child of God, I want you to know this and be free from every lies and accusation of the devil. There is no record of sin against you in heaven. Hallelujah. There is no record of your past in heaven. God is not piling up your sin to use against you. As we fall into sin, as we, as we confess before God, the blood of Jesus cleanses us and makes us clean. Glory to God. I, I'd like to read First John just to round up this morning. And for me, this is one of the greatest benefits of the kingdom of heaven. First John chapter 1, I'll read from verse 7 to 9. Hallelujah. Look at what it says from verse 7. It says, but, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, verse 8, we deceive, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Verse 9, but if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. This is provision of scripture. The Bible says if we confess, number one, we acknowledge our sins. And if we confess our sins, the Bible says God is super faithful and just. It is, it is in his faithfulness that he grants us divine pardon. Why? Because the penalty for our sin has been paid by another, Jesus the righteous. Glory to God. So he's just. He's not going to demand payment for sin that Jesus has paid. All we need to do is to confess our sin. And what does it say? The Bible says, and he will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The blood of Jesus is a stronger detergent than any all detergents of this world combined. There is no record of sin against you in the kingdom of God. We have obtained divine pardon and peace that endures. This is the gospel truth. But you see, a lot of people are scared to preach this because I understand 
Many people may take it as a license to continue with sin. The Bible says, shall we continue with sin and expect grace to abound? Romans chapter 6, Paul says, God forbid. Our nature is the nature of righteousness. We cannot continue in sin, taking grace for granted. That woman that was caught in the very act of adultery, Jesus said, neither do I condemn you, but with a provision, go and sin no more. That's the balance. No believer continues in deliberate acts of sin. It is not consistent with our nature. When a Christian feels comfortable in the life of sin, I want to put a question mark on his salvation experience. Let me say this. When a Christian man or a Christian woman continues and enjoys a life of sin, I put a question mark on his Christian experience. Because our nature is a nature of righteousness. But for adventure we fall. We confess our sin and the blood of Jesus cleanses us and removes every record of sin against us and we obtain divine pardon. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So go and sin no more. But understanding this is not a license to continue with sin, but it's victory over sin. Understanding that Christ God has forgiven and forgotten about our past empowers us to live a life of righteousness, to live a life of holiness as pleasing to God. I want you to know that the first and most important benefit of being citizens of the kingdom of God is divine power. And to a Zion, and to a ecstatic, and to glad that you, we have received pardon for our sin. And so you're happy, super excited that I was, there's no record of sin against us anymore, that we are free to serve God, free from the, 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 the pressure of passing, free from every sense of guilt. And, 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 and you know, it, it, there's something that sin does. It makes you, you know, not, not being able to stand before God. The guilt of sin would kill your relationship with God. And God doesn't want anything to stand between you and him. And he removes the sin question and says, I remember no more. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He said, bless the Lord of my soul and forget not all his benefit. Who forgives you all your iniquities? Child of God, your sins are forgiven. Go and sin no more. Have this liberty that my past has been washed away. Now I'm born again. I live a new life, a life of victory over sin. <clears throat> a life of victory over every form of transgression and iniquity. Glory to God forevermore. Father, we thank you for bringing this to our knowledge again. That you have pardoned us. You have given us divine pardon. That the moment we come to Jesus and confess our sin, no record of sin is against us anymore. We are brand new creature. Born again. Empowered to live above sin. May this knowledge continue to give us strength in our life's journey. Glory be to your name forevermore. For in Jesus' precious name we we'll pray. Amen. Hallelujah. We give God praise this morning.